Joining me on the channel today is Marianne Frazier, author of Mortal Remains, out now from Sterling Teen. It's about a teen who does makeup for the dead at her family's funeral home business and who develops feelings for a boy with a mysterious past. Welcome, Marianne. Oh, good morning. <laughs> So great I to always, be here. Thanks for this opportunity. Thank you for being here. I always like to start at the beginning and explore your path to becoming a published author. What kind of kid were you? Uh, busy. Um, I was the oldest of four and I, from the time I think I was three, I would draw and paint all the time. Um, and then uh, I love to be outside. You know, it was the ages when my parents would say, don't come back till dark. So uh, I was out most of the time. And uh, our family also did a lot of crafts. So we did a lot of crafting all the time, just kind of everything like that. So, yeah, so you, this is your YA debut, but I read that you're also an award winning uh, author illustrator of children's book, of picture books. Um, so yeah. what's that like making the transition from, from being an author illustrator at, to YA novels? Um, you know, it, it was really quite an adjustment. I've always wanted to write novels, but never thought that was something I could do. But because I was an illustrator, I first thought of illustrating children's books. So I started illustrating other people's books, um, worked on my craft of writing. And so finally, when I was brave enough to try and write a young adult novel, um, I remember writing that first paragraph and struggling because in picture books, every single word is essential and more so than in, in, in writing a novel. And so my first paragraph was very brief, very short. And I thought, well, I'm never gonna be able to sustain an entire <laughs> novel. So it took a while to get the, the words flowing. But fortunately, because I think visually, uh, description, setting the scene, that kind of thing came easier, I think. So yeah, it was, it was quite an adjustment, quite an adjustment. And what, what kind of books did you like reading as a uh, kid? A lot of everything, everything. I, I'm, I'm uh, always been fascinated just by learning in itself, definitely nature. Um, and I, we didn't have a lot of books at home, certainly not kids books at all. Uh, I think we had a Hans Christian Andersen, that kind of thing. But in the summer, my mom would take us to the library and I was just eager to learn anything and everything. I remember one time checking out a book on falconry, Jewish cooking, uh, first first aid, and how to speak Arabic. <laughs> that was like one visit to the, but I was like religiously into uh, nonfiction on nature. Animals were always my fascination. And so I was forever checking out books and trying to learn what was what and their scientific names and the habitats and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, just interested in learning. And how, how did you go from being a reader to thinking that you could write your own books and go on that publishing journey? You know, um, I took the long route for sure. Uh, from the time I could read, you know, a lot of people read a book and it really connects with them and they think, oh, I want to read another book like that. And for me, it was always, I want to write a book like that. But it was a time when we didn't have authors come visit us in schools. And so in my young mind, this was an impossibility. You know, I, 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 even though I was a straight A student, English was definitely the subject I struggled with because it was so subjective, unlike math and science. So I kind of ruled it out. And then when I was in college, um, I was a fine art major and beginning to think about what I was going to do with my major. And I, by coincidence or fate, I had a class on the history of children's books. And I began to think maybe I could illustrate, you know, children's books. And so I made an appointment with the professor to go in and ask him what I needed to do. And I sat down and I, I told him what I was interested in, in doing. And he looked at me and he said, you know, if I were you, I would just forget about it. He said, oh. it's such a competitive field. There are so many really good, talented people that your chances of being successful are, are almost zero. And unfortunately, I gave him much more credibility than I should have. I think he was trying to protect me from struggling. And so it was, yeah. it was a good six or seven years before I even began to think about doing books. 
And in the meantime, I was doing commercial illustration and kind of a couple things came together. Uh, somebody approached me about illustrating their book. Um, mm -hmm. And I started doing some research and realized that at the time, especially independent book selling was, or not independent book selling, you know, self-publishing was not or an easy route at all. And uh, in fact, um, people were discouraged from getting their own illustrators. So I said, no, I don't, I don't think this is a good idea, but that kind of lit the fire and then it, and then it kind of went from there. So definitely took me a while to kind of realize that everything in my life had sort of geared me up for doing that. I just didn't realize it till later. And so tell us about the day that you found out your book was going to be oh published. My gosh. Um, you know, so first of all, the book was a 12 year process. Um, I had another novel I was working on. I had to, I had to stop and, and go back into some revisions on it at the time. And uh, I had worked quite closely with my agent, Abigail Simone, who was uh, so amazingly patient with me and just kept giving me suggestions and I would take those to heart and, and I work on it. And so it was like a 12 year process. And uh, we knew we had a publisher who was interested and they kept saying, be patient, you know, we're, this is gonna take a while. They didn't say why. And after about a year, I, I talked to my agent. I said, you know, is this like still gonna happen? She says, oh yeah, they keep saying they're still interested. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And then one day I got, I had this message from my agent. I remember I was doing something. I had a, I had a message from my agent and she said, oh my gosh, best news ever. She was, she was so choked up and so like, I'm so proud of you and you did it and you stuck with it. And it was the best, best possible phone call ever. And uh, I immediately called her as soon as I, as I could. And we just kind of gushed for like, you know. We're still guessing. <laughs> yeah, your um, it was amazing. Yeah. You saying that it's been a twelve-year process and that your 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 journey was long is certainly basically something that's repeated a lot on this channel with people's interviews. Like, there's really only been two people who are like, actually, it went really fast. <laughs> like everyone yeah. else um, is like, yeah, it took at least ten years. So, what was your journey to um, you know getting your first agent and uh, you know writing your book, getting your first agent? What was what did that look like? So, uh, my first agent actually, um, I was I'm a member of SCBWI used to attend um, conferences regularly, still would if I could. And um, so I was at a conference, I was beginning to think about getting an agent. There, when I first started, you didn't, it was much easier to submit without an agent. And then I sort oh, of wow. realized, you know, I'm spending so much time submitting that um, I'm not getting as much time to work. So uh, I decided, you know, referrals are always the best. And I was sitting in a session and um, uh, Dan Sansusi was talking about like how he loved his agent. She was so wonderful. And so I went up to him afterwards and I said, who's your agent? And he told me, and so um, it was Barbara Couts. So I worked with her for about 15 years. And then when I, when I started delving into young adult though, um, she was getting close to retirement, wasn't interested uh, particularly in representing me for YA. So I realized I needed an agent who could represent me for picture books, both fiction and nonfiction, my illustration and my YA. And so that really narrowed the field quickly. And um, I just mm -hmm. was so fortunate that I found um, Abby because she was a perfect fit. And uh, yeah, it's just been a great journey with her since then, you know, so. So pitch your book, tell us all about it in your own words. Okay, so I first pitched, um, Pitch Mortal Remains as Edward Scissor's Hands meets Six Feet Under. And it's the story of an introverted um, daughter of a mortician. And it's blended with first love, lore, and loss with a dash of mad scientist mixed in. So um, it's it doesn't slot really neatly into any particular genre, but best described as young adult gothic romance. What drew you? I mean, I love I, I love everything to do with death yeah, and too. like the death industry. <laughs> I think it's all fascinating. Yeah. What drew you to that? What was that first inspiration? Well, you know, it's really funny because it's the last thing I would think I would have written. Um, I don't particularly like 
um, psychological thrillers or really scary movies. And when I was young, I had like a real big hang up with death. Um, I had not lost anybody close to me. And I remember my mom taking me to a service um, and it was an open casket and I kind of freaked. And, like, and, and I had relatives who told me true stories about ghosts and everything else. So it's not something I thought I would go into, but um, I, I was, ex I ran across, um, well, I had written one day sitting in the parking lot, I had written this little couple page thing about a girl who was created by some witches. And so I started thinking about that idea and researching it. And I ran across um, this, this article about a, uh, NASA Ames research in back in the 1960s was researching the, the viability or the possibility that clay particles could have been the origin of life as opposed to the pea soup theory that we're all familiar with. And I started thinking about that and then thinking about biblical accounts of how humans were created from dust and, you know, um, just worldwide theories on origin of humans. And I thought, what a perfect way to explore what it means to be human, you know? And so that became sort of the heart of the story, all that came out of sort of this random bit of research that, that I stumbled across. So it, it was, it became, even though it's in a world surrounded about death, it's really about respect for the living and what it means to be human. You know, what, what does that, you know, encompass? Yeah. And back to publishing, what's a misconception that you had about publishing prior to being published that has now changed? Uh, you know, um, I think, I think the biggest revelation with this book in particular is how different it is to promote and market a young adult book versus picture books. Um, mm. and, and so picture books, it's a very different audience. You're writing for children, but you're selling to teachers, librarians, and parents. So you're selling to adults. And what I love about, and that's great. I love um, speaking in schools and talking to teachers and librarians and sharing books with kids. That's great. But what's different about young adult is you can actually talk directly to your audience. And that's mm -hmm. that connection is just so different and so wonderful. And so you're still, you know, um, I know a lot of adults who are reading Mortal Remains and, you know, I know um, people in their 90s who are reading it in their 80s and enjoying the book and I know teens who are loving it and they're all finding they're all taking something different away from it so that's really exciting and rewarding for me I'm but but was surprising very cool um what's your favorite step is it drafting or revising? Oh, definitely revising um when I talk to students I say you know it's like being a sculptor you have to gather the clay before you can shape it and I find that first draft is like a long slog through a swamp. You know, you, you're trying to discover what the real nuggets of your story are, where you're going, who your characters are. And revising is now you've gathered all this stuff together and you're like, how am I going to shape it? And what am I going to shape it into? And I find that um, really exciting. And also when you're revising, hopefully, everything you do to it makes it better and better and better. And, and that's where the time comes in really, you know, you're, you're learning. I was learning basically a new, I knew how to write, but this was a different kind of writing and there's a lot of discovery in there and exploring. So um, definitely revising. What do your first drafts look like? Long. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> my first novel, this isn't my first novel that I wrote. Um, my first novel actually is just went through a major revision again uh, because it was a, it's been a longer process. But um, I drafted that and you know I think it was uh, like 150,000 words and I drafted that in five five months, so very long. And uh, but I like that. I, I find it uh, again like like sculpting. You build something together and then you whittle it away to shape it. And so um, I like to overwrite. And, and that's pretty much how I approach all my writing is I overwrite and then I pare it down to the essentials, you know, so. Mm. And what's been the best revision tip that you've gotten along the way? 
Best revision tip. Um, gosh, there's so many. Uh, wow. You know, I, I think you have to look at what the heart of your story is. You have to know what the heart of your story is. And everything needs to point towards that in one way or another. So you have your inner conflict and you have your outer conflict, but those really have to have a connection and you're you're working towards that connection the whole way through. And when you deviate, when you get away from it, that's when you get lost. So um, another really great tip that someone told me, and this is real specific, but it was such a great tip, is that when you get stuck in your writing, uh, you, you usually need to back up. You've set something up incorrectly and you have to go back and correct that before you can move forward. And so usually when you're stuck, the question you should be asking yourself is, what did I set up incorrectly? And you go back to that, so. Ooh, I like that. Oh, um, what you, are, are you like more of a plotter or a pantser? Uh, I started off very much a pantser and that's probably what I lean into the most, but I find I can save myself a lot more time now um, if I go into some, you know, basic bones kind of plotting. Um, it's funny because I know so many writers who say that they don't start a story uh, until they know the end or they, or they know the end just immediately. And I have to discover that. And part of it is I have a really short attention span. So if I know everything already, it's hard to sustain the interest for me. Part of me is discovering, you know, where the story goes. And I'm always amazed I can be writing about a character and they go off in this direction, like, well, wait, that you're not supposed to be doing that. And yet it leads someplace really interesting. So I like to leave room for that to happen. And that's what makes it fun for me. Yeah. Do you start with the character first or like the plot and idea first? Regrettably the plot, <laughs> which is the, I think because that plotting is the, the biggest struggle for me. Uh, and then so because I'm kind of pantsing in, I'm sort of discovering my character, you know, along the way. So um, I find that first draft is kind of just getting stuff out, seeing where it goes, figuring out what the story is. And then I can go back and go, like, okay, now I know what, what this is supposed to be. And through that, I discover the character. Um, Lily, I knew she had been bullied. I knew she was incredibly insecure. Uh, I knew she had a huge heart and uh, that she would she was more comfortable with the dead than the living, but figuring out why sometimes that was and how she was gonna overcome that, that was, you know, a, a road of, of discovery. But, uh, and then minor characters, they seem to come easier than the main characters sometimes because of the complexity that you're looking for, so. Yeah, is, is um, are you like more of a morning writer or an evening writer? Uh, both. <laughs> I'm definitely a morning person. <laughs> I'm definitely a morning person. I'm an early riser. When I was working on the book, I would get up at four in the morning and just couldn't wait to get back into it. Uh, so definitely I'm better in the morning, but when I'm on a roll, I'll start first thing in the morning, maybe take a break to eat, make another cup of tea, and I'll work till I can't focus anymore. So 11, 11, 30 at night. But um, I know some writers who write really into the early morning hours and that's not me, so. Was there ever a point where you feared you would never be published? Yeah, all, all the way along, <laughs> pretty much all the way along. You know, you're, put, you're putting your soul on, you know, into this story and you're just wondering, you know, is there, is there room for another book out there? Are people gonna find this interesting? You know, am I gonna be able to get through this revision? Um, it, yeah, you, I, I don't know. I, I, I doubt it all the way along. Um, but then I would, when I would go back and read it, it, I would just, I mean, I've read this story like 40 times and every time I'm like, oh, I love this story. So I, I kind of just kept the faith and thought, you know, just, just keep going at it. I knew I couldn't, I couldn't set it aside. So yeah, that's just part of the um, process. Would you ever like to be famous? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Would you ever like to be famous? You know, um, well, we live in a culture of celebrity worship and not in that way. If I was famous because people connected with my stories 
and wanted to share them, then yeah, that would be that would be fantastic. But fame in in and of itself, um, no, not not so much. You know, I just if you it, could have, yeah, if you ahead. could have any <laughs> non supernatural talent or ability, what would it be? You know, I'm a terrible judge of people. I would love to be able to meet someone and like read their souls and really, you know, is, is this a good person? Do they have a good heart or are they just pulling one over my eyes? <laughs> I mean, I just, <laughs> I, you know, and just think how great that would be for character development. But um, yeah. yeah, I would, I would love to be able to read into people's souls. That's you know, yeah. That's a really good really one. Like. Oh, yeah. what are you working on right or now? Or fooling me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm the same right. way. I'm like, I just assume everyone is, is good. And then when someone turns out to be yeah. bad, I'm like, how did I not see that? <laughs> well, and you know, especially in these days, you know, I, to be honest, you know, in the age of COVID, I kind of, you know, idealistic hope that it would bring the best out of people. And I've seen some things and I think, how, how can people be that way or or some of the stuff we see on the internet where people are just mean and spiteful for no particular reason and I guess there's a part of me is like what what drives someone to be that way because I I find it yeah. so incomprehensible you know I, I'm, I'm yeah. one of these you know can't we all get along can't we be kind <laughs> so yeah, super idealistic like obviously yeah, it seems like it takes so much energy to be a jerk. Yeah. Like, I yeah. can't imagine putting that much energy out there on, on anything, but this it takes so much energy to be a jerk. Why? It's so much Why? easier just to be nice. <laughs> it's like people who have computers, and I think, gosh, if you applied that kind of knowledge to like a, a legitimate job, you know, <laughs> but instead, so yeah, I don't get it. So I keep thinking, ah, I want to be able to see inside their heads and think, like, what are you thinking? Definitely. What, what are you working on right now? Um, several projects. Um, so I have this other novel that I just did a major uh, revision with. It's with my agent right now. So I'm waiting to kind of for her to be able to read that through and see what she thinks. And then I have a picture book called Let It Grow that will be out in um, on August 1st this year. And then I'm working on a middle grade nonfiction um, with the Getty Museum which I can't talk about too much, but I'm super excited about that. And uh, it's really um, research intensive. So I'm working on that as well. And I'm hoping some, some other ideas come along too. So kind of have projects in every stage right now. So that's exciting. I like that. Yeah, how exciting. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Everyone check out Mortal Remains. I've put by links below and I've also linked to uh, Mary Ann's social media. So definitely follow her on social media. Thank you so much for being on the channel, Mary Thank Ann. Thank you so much. This was great chatting with you. Thank you.